होते तो हम कहा होते न जाने चाहने वाले तेरे हमारी पुष्त पे दो रो के क्यों नशा हमारी पुष्त पे दो रो के क्यों नशा होते अगर हुसैन बर मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद सलाम सहर रोती रही मादरे मुजतर असगर तसहर रोती रही मादरे मुजतर हो शब खबर के अंदर असगर ये न था इल्म के बा को ये दिन होगा नसीब ये न था इल्म के बा को ये दिन होगा नसीब आएगी खबर पते रे तेरी मादर असवर आएगी खबर पते रे तेरी मादर असगर सुबह दम हेच किया आती रही मुझको बेटा सुबह दम हेच किया आती रही मुझको बेटा क्या मुझे याद किया खबर के अंदर असगर क्या मुझे याद किया खबर के अंदर असगर ऐ मेरे मन तो वाले मेरे भोले भाले ऐ मेरे मन तो वाले मेरे भोले भाले ऐ मेरे लाखते जिगर ऐ मेरे असगर असगर ऐ मेरे लाखते जिगर ऐ मेरे असगर असगर लोरिया दे के सहर करती तो माँ सोते थे लोरिया दे के सहर करती तो माँ सोते थे नींद आई है लहर मैं तुम्हें क्यों कर असगर नींद आई है लहर मैं तुम्हें क्यों कर असगर है न बिस्तर न तो बानो की है गोदी बेटा है न बिस्तर न तो बानो की है गोदी बेटा चुपते होंगे तुझे अब खबर के कंकर असगर चुपते होंगे तुझे अब खबर के कंकर असगर तसहर रोती रही पर मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद सलमान सलवा
حضرت عباس شاہ لافتا کے شیر حضرت عباس شاہ لافتا کے شیر خند کو خیبر کے وہ یہ کربلا کے شیر ہیں خند کو خیبر کے وہ یہ کربلا کے شیر ہیں کیوں نہ ہو ہر جنگ میں یہ مثل ہے در فتحیا وہ خدا کے شیر یہ شیر خدا کے شیر کیوں نہ ہو ہر جنگ میں یہ مثل ہے در فتحیا وہ خدا کے شیر یہ شیر خدا کے شیر حضرت عباس شاہ کہتی تھی بانو اسگر جانی کب تم گھر میں آوگے دریا پر سے پی کر پانی کب تم گھر میں آوگے اپنی دکھانے شکل سہانی کب تم گھر میں آوگے رن سے پھر کر یوسف سانی کب تم گھر میں آوگے سوگ میں تیرے بیٹا پہنی کفنی کالی ہے ارے بھورے بالوں والے تو آ جا جھولا تیرا خالی ہے سوگ میں تیرے بیٹا پہنی کفنی کالی ہے ارے بھورے بالوں والے تو آ جا تھی بانو سلامی کیا غرض اس کو کسی اکسیر سے اے سلامی 
چادر اس کو کسی اکثر سے جس کو نسبت ہو گئی خاک در شبیر سے جس کو نسبت ہو گئی خاک در شبیر سے الفت شہ ہم نے پائی خوبی تقدیر سے رے الفت شہ ہم نے پائی خوبی تقدیر سے یہ وہ دولت ہے جو ہاتھ آتی نہیں تدبیر سے یہ وہ دولت ہے جو ہاتھ آتی نہیں تدبیر سے اے سلامی کیا غرق اس کو کسی اکسیر سے دین ہا کو ہم نے سمجھا اس وے شبیر سے پھر دین ہا کو ہم نے سمجھا اس وے شبیر سے جس طرح قرآن سمجھا جاتا ہے تفسیر سے جس طرح قرآن سمجھا جاتا ہے تفسیر سے سلامی کیا غرق اس کو کسی اکسیر سے اس لیے ہم کربلا جاتے ہیں جنت کے لیے اس لیے ہم کربلا جاتے ہیں جنت کے لیے لیں گے ہم جاگیر لیکن صاحب جاگیر سے لیں گے ہم جاگیر لیکن صاحب جاگیر سے سیر سے روئے عابد پر نظر ہے یاد آتے ہیں روئے عابد پر نظر ہے یاد آتے ہیں اس قدر ملتی ہوئی تصویر ہے تصویر سے اس قدر ملتی ہوئی تصویر ہے تصویر سے سلامی کیا غرض اس کو کسی اکسیر سے فرق خالق نے نہیں رکھا برائے نام بھی فرق خالق نے نہیں رکھا برائے نام بھی زور عابد کیوں نلتا زخ ہے برگیر سے زور عابد کیوں نہ ملتا زور خیر برگیر سے سلامی کیا غرق اس کو کسی اکسیر سے تیرے خود بین سر دربار ثابت کر دی تیرے خود بین سر دربار ثابت کر دی 
ظلم کا تختہ الٹ سکتا ہے ایک تقریر سے ظلم کا تختہ الٹ سکتا ہے ایک تقریر سے سلامی کیا غیر ہے اس کو کسی اکثر سے وہ بھی تو نے آنسوں کی دھار سے سر کر پر وہ بھی تو نے آنسوں کی دھار سے سر کر مار کا جو سر نہ ہو سکتا کبھی شمشیر سے مار کا جو سر نہ ہو سکتا کبھی شمشیر سے سلامی کیا غر ہے اس کو کسی اکثر سے ماتم سجاد کا یہ بھی اثر ہے کلی ماتم سجاد کا یہ بھی اثر ہے زندگی اس قوم کی ہے ماتم شبیر سے زندگی اس قوم کی ہے ماتم شبیر سے اے سلامی کیا غرار اس کو کسی اکثر سے جس کو نسبت ہو گئی خاکے درے شبیر سے اے سلامی کیا غرار زندہ میں جب کے دخترے شابیر مر گئے زندہ میں جب کے دخترے شابیر مر گئے دنیا سے دفعت سفر خود کر کنب کے دل پہ داغ جدائی کا دھرگ غل پر گیا حسین کی عاشق گزر گئی غل پر گیا حسین کی عاشق گزر جنت بسائی چھوڑ کے دنیا کے بعد تازہ کیا ہے پھر علی اصغر کے دعو کو تازہ کیا ہے پھر علی اصغر کے دعو بازو ہلا کے بانو ناشاد نے بی بی پیدر کے سر سے اٹھا او تو سر پر باتیں ابھی تو کرتی تھی آنسو بہا ساکیت ہے نابز ہائے غزب سرد دست پا ساکت ہے نبز ہائے غزب سرد دست مو دیکھتے ہی زیست کا نقشہ بدل کس وقت سانس رگئی کب دم نکل گیا 
किस वक्त सांस रुक गई तुमने नजर ये रात माँ के साथ तड़प कर बसर जी भर के फिर जियारत रुए पे दर जी भर के फिर जियारत रुए पे दर चौथे बरस में हाय सिधारी जहान दुख कैद के न उठ सक नन्नी सी जान से दुख कैद के न उठ सके नन्नी सी जान लोहात जोड़ती है ये माँ ऐसकीन मुझको बुला लो तुम हो जहाँ ऐसकीन ढूंढ निकल के तुमको कहाँ ऐसकी मादर को कब्र है ये मकान ऐसकीन मादर को कब्र है ये मकान ऐसकीन मैं जानती हूँ मौत से पत्थर हयात अरे अब कौन सोएगा मेरे पहलू में रात अब कौन सोएगा मेरे पहलू में रात या किस के पास रहती शह कर बला बीबी के नाज उठाने की खातिर चचान नादार माँ है पानी नहीं और गजान पर अब कफन के वास्ते है हैरदान पर अब कफन के वास्ते हैरदान अम्मा के पास रहने की ईजा उठा चुके बीबी तमाच खा चुकी गर्दन बंधा चुकी बीबी तमाच खा चुकी गर्दन रा चुकी बच्ची ये माँ तुझे किधर अब ढूंढने को जा गम रसीदा तूने कयामत के दुख छुटकर पे दर से घुड़किया खाई तमाज बीबी रसन बंदी तेरी गर्दन में हाय बीबी रसन बंदी तेरी गर्दन में हाय जो सख्तिया फलक ने दिखाई वो से बुंदे जो छिन गए मेरा मुंह तक के रह गए बुंदे जो छिन गए मेरा मुंह तक रह गए मुढ़ापती थी सुबह को उठ बैठती थी अब पीटती हूँ और तुम्हें मुतलक नहीं खबर अब पीटती हूँ और तुम्हें मुतलक नहीं मुझसा कोई भी बेको सोबे पर ना हो अरे पहलू में माँ के बैठ के अब कौन रोएगा पहलू में माँ के बैठ के अब कौन रोएगा जिंदाओ में जब के दुखरे
Couple of uh, community announcement. Tonight after Husaini Majlis, they are free and requested to attend this. Tomorrow, November 12th, Saturday, Youth Committee has arranged youth basketball at Ackerman Gym in Glen Ellen from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. All boys 13 and older are welcome to attend. It's a privilege to have Sheikh Azhar Nasser with us from Orlando, Florida. On behalf of IC community, we are truly grateful and thankful to him for being with us for these three nights. Sheikh Azhar Nasser is currently the Imam of the IEC of Orlando, Florida. He is also the official spokesman, a little like Ali Allah, an organization which focuses on humanitarian efforts in Yemen. He was born and raised in Michigan and has a degree in cultural anthro uh, anthropology from the University of Michigan. After completing his academic studies, he pursued his religious study at the Hoza of Najaf under the tutelage of Grand Ayatollah Sistani and Grand Ayatollah Al-Hakim. In addition to extensive study of the classical religious texts, he's also taught introductory courses to Western students at the seminary. Sheikh Azhar Nasir has a deep passion for the study of the Holy Quran, which is evident from his lectures and discussion. He has, recently uh, he has recently written a book on the art of Quranic reflection, which will be released later this year. Uh, without any further ado, I would request Sheikh Azhar Nasir to the member with the Lord Salawat. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Thaniyatan ala hubbil hasani wal husayn. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ala hubbi rasulillah al-thalitha bi a'la a'la aswatikum. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد والثناء لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة يا ليتنا فيا ليتنا كنا معكم سيدي فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا صدق الله العلي العظيم وسلم على محمد All of the teachings the teachings guide إن هذا of legislation within Islam, within the Islamic tradition, is the Holy Quran. 
The second source of all Islamic teachings is the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet and by extension, the words and the actions and the affirmations of the Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi alayhim ajma'een. And this is alluded to in the Holy Quran. The Quran itself testifies that it is not a sufficient source of knowledge. That there is another requirement to get a holistic formula for salvation. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah number 59, Surah Al Hashr, Ayah number 7, He says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ Whatever the Holy Prophet presents to you, take it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever the Holy Prophet prohibits, refrain from it. So here the Holy Qur'an identifies a second important source of Islamic knowledge. However, there is a problem that we are confronted with. The first source of knowledge, the Holy Qur'an, is divinely protected. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Hijr, Ayah number 9, He gives a guarantee that this first source of knowledge is protected from error. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidun. Allah says, We have revealed the reminder and we have taken it upon ourselves to protect it. However, so the Holy Quran is protected, it's divinely protected from adulteration, from distortion, from error. But this divine protection was not given to the hadith traditions. The Quran is protected by Allah Azza wa Jal, it cannot be tampered with. But this same divine protection was not afforded to the ahadith of the Holy Prophet. You find that after the death of the Prophet, and even during the life of the Holy Prophet, there were concerted efforts by the munafiqeen, by the hypocrites, to distort and fabricate the traditions of the Holy Prophet. So you find that the scholars of Islam had to come together and develop a system a criteria, certain criteria to distinguish authentic traditions and fabricated traditions. This was a science that had to develop because of the plethora of fabricated traditions that were found in the Muslim community. You take, for example, Al Alam Al Hilli, the famous 13th century 12 er Shia. Theologian. You see, brothers and sisters, when the ulama study a hadith, there are two components of a hadith that are examined by scholars. The first is al matn, the content. In simple terms, what does the hadith say? This is known as the matn. So you find that scholars will examine the language of the hadith. They will seek to understand what is the meaning of this word that was used by the Prophet in 7th century Arabia. Was the meaning of it changed? What were the circumstances under which this hadith was uttered by the Ma'asun? So you find that on one level, scholars will study what is being said, the met. But beyond that, scholars study a hadith at another level. They study the Senate, which is who said it. So you have what is being said and who claims that this was uttered by the Holy Prophet or the Ahlul Bayt. There is a categorization of a hadith based on the Senate, based on who is transmitting the hadith. Al-Allam al hilla 
العلامة الحلي قدس الله نفسه الشريفة this prominent scholar who lived in the 13th century who incidentally is buried only meters away from Amir al-Mu'mineen صلوات الله عليه He developed four different categories of ahadith based on the Senate, known as At-Taqseem Al-Ruba'i. He says every hadith that you find will fall under one of these four categories based on the Senate. So he says, number one, the first type of hadith is known as Al-Hadith Al-Sahih. You know, many times we ask, when we read a hadith, when we hear a hadith, we ask, is this hadith sahih? Is it authentic? But many of us don't even know what are the criteria, what is the criteria that has to be met for a hadith to be considered sahih? So the first type of hadith is sahih hadith, an authentic hadith. Allam al-Hilli, he says, a hadith that is sahih is defined as a hadith in which all of the ruwat, all of their narrators are 12 or shi'as. They are all ithna ashari and they are all udul. They are all righteous. So there are two th requirements that have to be met. They all have to be ithna ashari and they all have to be udul. We have to know, we have to have ample evidence that these are righteous individuals. They have taqwa, they have piety. This is number one. The second type of hadith is known as al-hadith al-muwathaq. This is a hadith where not all of the narrators are ithna asharis. There may be some in the chain who are non-shia. However, the scholars of hadith have determined that that non-Shi'i is still trustworthy, is reliable. So they categorize this hadith as muwathaq, reliable. And it still carries weight among the fuqaha. Number three, there is a hadith that is known as al-hadith al-hasan. Al-hadith al-hasan, which basically means a, a hadith that has a good standing. Which means this is a hadith where all or some of them are ithna ashari, but not all of them are confirmed to be righteous. Some of them are of questionable character. Some of them may have been praised by the Ahlul Bayt, but we don't have sufficient evidence to say that this is someone who is righteous, someone who is adil. Because someone may be ithna ashari, but they're not trustworthy. They may exaggerate. They may not have that degree of righteousness for us to say that we can rely wholeheartedly on this tradition. And then finally we have al-hadith al-da'if, a weak hadith. This is a hadith that doesn't fall under the first three categories. So either we have a tradition where we look at the senate and... There is someone in the Senate who is unknown. We don't know who this person is. We have no record of them. Or the Hadith, we know the individuals, but there is a gap between the one who's reporting the Hadith and the Ma'soom. So you have someone who lives 50, 60 years after Ja'far al-Sadiq, who says, Qala al-Imam al-Sadiq. We ask, how did you report from the sixth Imam when you were not living during his time? So you find Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So you find that there is a gap between the narrator and the ma'soom. This is known as Al Hadith al Va'if. So we said we have four ahadith Al Hadith al Sahih, Al Hadith al Muwathaq, Al Hadith al Hasan, Al Hadith al Va'if. So this is one classification of ahadith based on senate. There is another way to classify ahadith to determine their authenticity and that is by looking at how many times 
The hadith has been transmitted. How many different chains are there? And based on that, you find that there are two main categories of a hadith. There is al hadith al mutawatir, and there is al hadith al ahad. Now, what is the difference? Al hadith al mutawatir is a hadith that has been reported by so many different chains that it creates certainty that it is true. Let me give you a very simple example. If someone now comes into the masjid and says there is a car accident in the parking lot, this is one report. So another person comes off have not seen the accident. But can you say with relative certainty that there is an accident in the parking lot? You can. Why? Because you have received multiple reports from individuals and you don't see any conspiracy to forge a lie. You can say that I am certain that there is an accident in the parking lot based on the number, the frequency and the number of the reports. We have some ahadith, for example, like Hadith al Ghadir. Hadith al Ghadir has it is the most reported ahadith from the Holy Prophet. There is no hadith among all of the ahadith of the Holy Prophet that has. So we know based on that, based on the number of reports that there was an event where the Holy Prophet said, Man kuntu mawla, fahadha aliyun mawla, based on the multiplicity of the reports. There are some ahadith where no, we may have one report, two reports, three reports, and these are known as ahad. Ahadith that, not, that have not been reported with a high degree of frequency, they, and they don't give us that level of certainty that they took place. Now, how, what is the is of hadith? What is it? They will say the Holy Prophet once said, the Holy Prophet said, I am leaving behind two weighty things, the book of Allah and my sunnah. If you ask a follower of Ahlul Bayt, what is hadith al thaqalain They will say, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ إِنِّي تَارِكٌ فِيكُمُ الثَّقَلَيْنِ Kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti. So we have a hadith. It has the same name. It's given the same title, and you have two different versions. Now we have to determine which version was uttered by Rasulullah. So you have one version. So there is agreement that one of the thaqalin is Quran. Alhamdulillah, we are in agreement that at least one of the thaqalain is the Qur'an. The digression is where? The divergence is where? The second weighty thing. One school says, my sunnah. The other school says, my progeny, the Ahlul Bayt. It's interesting to note that the hadith, the version of Hadith al thaqalain that reads, I am leaving behind two weighty things. The book of Allah and my sunnah is not reported by any of as-sihah as-sitta. You look at Sahih al-Bukhari, you will not find Kitab Allah wa sunnati. You open Sahih Muslim, you will not find Kitab Allah wa sunnati. You open Sunan at Tirmidhi, there is no Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. Sunan ibn Majah, no Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. Sunan al Nisa'i, no Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. Sunan Abi Dawood, 
No mention of Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. The six most authentic books in the Sunni tradition do not record this alleged hadith from the Holy Prophet. In fact, I challenge any, I challenge my Sunni brothers and sisters humbly to bring me one hadith mentioned in the celebrated six Sihah where the Prophet says, I am leaving behind two weighty things, the Book of Allah and my Sunnah. The authentic version is Kitab Allah wa Itrati Ahl Bayti. At the end of my majlis, I'll mention to you where this hadith is found. Kitab Allah wa Sunnati, where is it found? Now, we mentioned that the way, one of the ways we determine that a hadith is authentic is by examining how many times the hadith has been transmitted. And I gave you the example of the car accident in the parking lot. If you look at the Sunni books of hadith, the primary sources in Sunni hadith literature, you will find that the version of the hadith that reads, Inni tarikun fikum kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti, has 39 different chains. 39 different chains. In Shia hadith literature, you find that Kitab Allah wa Itrati Ahl Bayti has more than 82 different chains. So you find that any, st any scholar, when you look at how many times this hadith, this version of this hadith has been reported, every scholar will classify Hadith al Thaqalain. The version of the is a hadith that is mutawatir. And a hadith that is mutawatir is a hadith that has to be accepted as haq. It has to be accepted as truth. لِأَنَّهُ يُفِيدُ yaqeen Because it gives the reader yaqeen. Now, we've established through the system and through the requirement of tawatur that hadith al the version that we, the school of Ahlul Bayt, accept is confirmed in Sunni traditions. But the question is, who is this Ahlul Bayt that the Holy Prophet is referring to? <laughs> Ahlul Bayt literally means the people of the household. There is one verse in the Holy Quran that many of us have memorized where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explicitly mentions Ahlul Bayt. And it's the ayah that many of us have memorized from a very young age. Where Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا But the Holy Quran doesn't list who are these Ahlul Bayt. Allah doesn't say, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلِيٍ wa Allah doesn't mention the personalities. In fact, what creates the confusion with respect to this ayah is that, and the reason why this verse has been the subject of debate for centuries is because ayah to tathir does not begin with إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسِ If you open up that verse, you find that Allah Azza wa Jal begins by addressing the wives of the Prophet. Therein lies the secret behind the confusion. Allah Azza wa Jal, what does He say? He says, يَا نِسَاءَ النَّبِي This is how the ayah begins. يَا نِسَاءَ النَّبِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنْ Allah addresses the wives of the Prophet. Ayah 33 of Surah Al-Ahzab doesn't begin straight away, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنْ And stay in your homes. It's as though Allah was prophesizing that one of them will not stay in her home. 
وقرن في بيوتكن ولا تبرجن تبرج الجاهلية الأولى وأقمنا الصلاة وآتينا الزكاة وأطعنا الله ورسوله The ulama of Ahl sunnah they say Ayatu al-Tathir is about the wives of the Prophet because the ayah begins with Allah addressing the wives of the Prophet. Where did you get Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein from? They say that look, Allah is addressing the wives of the Prophet. It's very clear. And one of the proofs is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using Noon and Niswa. وَقَرْنَا فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَىٰ وَأَقِمْنَا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتِينَ الزَّكَاةَ وَأَطِعْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ It's clearly addressing the wives of the Prophet. Now, we say that yes, Allah begins by addressing the wives of the Prophet. But the verse does not say, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transitions from a feminine pronoun to a masculine pronoun. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْ كُمْ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ So there is a new audience. The linguists will come forward and they will say, in Arabic, you can use the masculine pronoun to address a group of males and females. And this is true. They say Rasulullah is among them. And even if we assume, we say add Ali, add Fatima, add Hassan and Hussein, and add all of the wives of the Prophet, you can still address them using the masculine pronoun. If that is the only argument that you have, you lost the debate. If grammar and siyaq of the ayah is the only argument that you have, you lose the debate. When you debate with those who follow another school, you always have to direct them to the literature that they deem to be authentic. You have to take them, for example, to Sahih Muslim, to show them that the wives are not included in Ayat al tathir How? There are two of the six books, of the six books that are considered authentic, that clearly eliminate the wives of the Prophet from being part of Ahlul Bayt. Sahih Muslim and Sunan At-Tirmidhi. And they speak specifically about the event of Hadith Al-Kisa. I begin and I'll share with you what Sahih Muslim says verbatim, word for word. The Hadith is from Aisha. She says that the Holy Prophet was not feeling well. Whenever Rasulullah would not feel well, he would go where? He would go to the house of Fatima to Zahra, salawatullahi alayhi. Everyone seeks refuge with Rasulullah. But when Rasulullah is in need of refuge, he goes to his daughter Fatima to Zahra, salawatullahi alayhi. Rasulullah, the hadith says from Aisha, خَرَجَ النَّبِيُّ غَدَاتًا وَعَلَيْهِ مِرْطٌ مُرَحَّلْ مِنْ شَعْرٍ أَسْوَدٍ The Holy Prophet had a black cloak, a black cloak. فَجَاءَ الْحَسَنِ She's reporting, she says, I saw the Prophet. He was wearing a black cloak. فَجَاءَ الْحَسَنُ بْنُ عَلِي Imam Al-Hasan, who was a young boy, he came, he entered into the house. فَأَدْخَلَ The Holy Prophet took him under the cloak. ثُمَّ جَاءَ الْحُسَيْنِ Aisha says after some time, Hussein ibn Ali came. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi took Hussein under the cloak with Imam al-Hassan. ثُمَّ جَاءَتْ فَاطِمَةً فَأَدْخَلَهَا When Lady Fatima alayhi salam came, again this is verbatim from Sahih Muslim, reported by Aisha. Subhanallah, even the ahadith are reported from personalities that are the most respected in those schools. And then Amir al Mu'mineen enters, and the Holy Prophet puts all of them under this black cloak. Aisha says, I heard Rasulullah recite, Inna ma yuridullah li yudhiba ankum urrids ahl al bayt wa yutahirakum tadhira. I ask the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, if the wives of the Prophet were among the Ahlul Bayt, why didn't Rasulullah say, Aisha, come with us under the cloak? She was left out of this occasion of Al Kisa. Sunan at Tirmidhi, he reports the following An Umar ibn Abi Salma, one of the companions of the Prophet. قال لما نزلت هذه الآية When ayat al-Tathir was revealed, the Holy Prophet, according to Sunan al-Tirmidhi, was in the house of Umm Salama. Hadith al-Kisa seems to have taken place on a number of occasions, at least two that we know of. But this ayah, according to this hadith from Sunan al-Tirmidhi, was revealed in the house of Umm Salama. فَدَعَى فَاطِمَ وَحَسَنًا وَحُسَيْنًا The Holy Prophet called upon Hassan and Hussein and Fatima فَجَلَّلَهُمْ بِكِسَى He put them under the cloak وَعَلِيٌّ خَلْفَ ظَهْرِ The hadith says Amir al-Mu'mineen was immediately behind the Prophet. He was behind Rasulullah under the cloak. And then Sunan al-Tirmidhi. Tirmidhi says the Prophet raises his hands in dua. Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlu bayti. Oh Allah, these are my ahlul bayt. Fa'adhib anhum rids. Oh Allah, remove any type of uncleanliness away from them. So this is a dua that the Prophet is making. Ayatul Tathir is the answer to the dua of Rasulullah. He says, Allahumma ha'ula'i ahlu bayti. فَأَذْهِبْ عَنْهُمُ الرِّدْزِ Allah answers, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّدْزَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Umm Salama approaches this gathering of the Holy Five. She says, the hadith says, I want to read it so I don't misquote. قَالَتْ أُمُّ سَلَمَ وَأَنَا مَعَهُمْ يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ Umm Salama says, am I with you, O Ahlul Bayt? Ya Rasulullah, am I included among this group? فَقَالَ أَنْتِ عَلَى مَكَانِكِ The Prophet says, stay where you are. Do not come close, because if you come too close, you will create confusion. Some people will think you are among Ahlul Bayt. Stay where you are. وَأَنْتِ عَلَى خَيْرٍ you are on the right path. You are a good woman. But you're not among the Ahlul Bayt. You are not Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So the one who says the ayah began by addressing the wives of the Prophet and there was a transition from a feminine pronoun to a masculine pronoun. And for those who say it's permissible in the Arabic language to address men and women using the masculine pronoun and therefore the wives of the Prophet are included. We demonstrate it through Sahih Muslim 
and Sunan al-Tirmidhi that the wives of the Prophet were excluded by the Prophet. We go to Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari, and inshallah, in one of these nights we'll speak about Bukhari, the book and the man. Bukhari reports from an Abil Hamra. Abil Hamra was one of the companions of the Prophet. And I read for you the hadith verbatim. Qal, sahibtu nabiyya tis'ata ashur. He says, I spent nine months with the Prophet. Nine months, he says, I was with the Prophet and I followed him like his own shadow. فَكَانَ إِذَا أَصْبَحَ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ يَأْتِي بَابَ عَلِيٍّ وَفَاطِنَ The man, he says, Ibn Abil Hamra, Abil Hamra says, I was with Rasulullah for nine months. And every single morning, every morning, for nine months, he would begin his day by going to the door of Ali and Fatima. He says, I was with him. He would stand outside of the door of Ali and Fatima. And what would he say? He said, I hear, I would hear him every morning. For nine months, he would stand and say, Assalamu alaykum ahl al bayt. Innama yuridu Allahu li yudhiba ankum al rits ahl al bayt wa yutahirakum tatheera. This ayah was so important that Rasulullah gave the tafsir for nine months. It's a hujjah upon us if Rasulullah, one time he points at the house of Ali and Fatima and says they are Ahlul Bayt. That is enough. But Rasulullah, to remove any shadow of doubt, he gives us the tafsir of that ayah every day for nine months to show you the importance of identifying who Ahlul Bayt are. Secondly, this ayah, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ Anyone who reads it, it's very clear that Allah is praising Ahlul Bayt. It's very clear that whoever the Ahlul Bayt are, they are being praised in a way that no prophet is praised in the Holy Quran. Bring me one ayah where Allah refers to the spiritual status of people by saying, لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَاهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Thorough purification. There are many who are purified in the Qur'an. But who in the Qur'an is purified thoroughly by Allah Azza wa Jal? So the ayah is praising Ahlul Bayt. For those who say that إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ refers to the wives of the Prophet, it doesn't make sense if you read the verses leading up to it. Why? إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّتْ is ayah 33 of Surah Al-Ahzab. Take a few, go a few verses back and see what Allah is saying to the wives of the Prophet. In ayah number 28, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي O Prophet, قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ Say to your wives, إِن كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا فَتَعَالَيْنَ أُمَتِّعُكُنَّ وَأُسَرِّحُكُنَّ سِرَاحًا جَمِيلًا Allah is admonishing the wives of the Prophet. He tells the Prophet, O Muhammad, tell your wives if they want dunya, you can divorce them and they can have dunya. Doesn't make sense that Allah is threatening them with divorce and then He says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّتْسِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ إِن كُنْتُنَّ تُرِدْنَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا فَتَعَالَيْنَ أُمَتِّعُكُنَّ وَأُسَرِّحُكُنَّ سِرَاحًا جَمِيلًا If you want dunya, go. I'll divorce you, you can have dunya. And then ayah number 30, the tone becomes even more 
harsh. Ya Nisa and Nabi. Now, the ayah number 28, Allah told the Prophet, tell them if they want dunya, you can divorce them and they can have dunya. Allah in ayah number 30, He tells the Prophet, don't speak. I will speak to them directly. Ya Nisa and Nabi. مَنْ يَأْتِ مِنْ كُنَّ بِفَاحِشَةٍ مُبَيِّنَةٍ يُضَاعَفْ لَهَا الْعَذَابِ ضعفين. O wives of the Prophet, have you ever been angry with someone where you don't tell someone to tell the person? You say, you know, sometimes when you're having, when you hear someone who's having a heated conversation, you take the phone and you want to speak with them directly. Allah Azza wa Jal is engaging with the wives of the Prophet directly. He says, if any of you commits an act of indecency, your punishment is double. Because you are connected to Rasulullah. You are the wife of the Prophet. So if you look at the context, does it make sense Allah threatens them with divorce if they want dunya? Allah threatens them with double punishment if they commit an indecent act. And then suddenly Allah says, <laughs> You find that even if you look at the context, it's very clear that Ahlul Bayt is not referring to the wives. In fact, there is a tradition in Sahih Muslim where Zayd ibn Arqam is asked, this question point blank. He's asked, وَمَنْ أَهْلُ بَيْتِهِ يَا زيد? O Zayd, who are the Ahlul Bayt? أَلَيْسَ نِسَاءُهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِ Aren't the wives of the Prophet his Ahlul Bayt? Zayd ibn Arqam, he says in Sahih Muslim, قَالَ أَهْلُ بَيْتِهِ مَنْ حُرِمَ الصَّدَقَةُ بَعْدَ he says, the Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet are those whom you cannot give sadaqah to. Did any of the wives of the Prophet say, we're not allowed to take sadaqah? Sadaqah is prohibited for the Ahlul Bayt. Therefore, the wives of the Prophet are not a part of the Ahlul Bayt. And you find that you don't even go, need to go beyond Hadith Thaqalain to establish that the wives of the Prophet are not part of the Ahlul Bayt. If you go back to Hadith Al-Thaqalain, look at the wording the Prophet uses. Inni tarikun fikum al-Thaqalain. I am leaving behind two weighty things, two precious things. Kitab Allah, the book of Allah. And then what does he say? وَعِتْرَتِي أَهْلَ بَيْتِي The Prophet doesn't say كتاب الله وأهل بيتي He adds the word عِتْرَتِي What does عِتْرَتِي mean? My progeny. To be part of Ahlul Bayt, you have to be what? You have to be from the dhurriya of the Prophet. Which means what? The wives of the Prophet, not only are they not part of his dhurriya, none of the wives of the Prophet gave him children. The Prophet's itra comes through who? Through Ali and Fatima. So the Prophet is making a subtle point that my Ahlul Bayt are, are who? They're my itra. And the wife is not part of their itra. Now you may ask, where did Kitab Allah wa Sunnati come from? Why is it that in mosques around the world we hear the version of the hadith where the Prophet says, Inni tarikun fikum Kitab Allah wa Sunnati. Where did this hadith come from? This hadith is recorded in one primary source. Malik ibn Anas recorded it in his Muwatta. Muwatta ibn Malik. Malik lived a hundred years after the Prophet. 
And he lived before Bukhari and Muslim and all of the other compilers of hadith. If you look at his version of hadith of Thaqalain, what does he say? Balaghani. It was said to me that the Prophet said, I am leaving behind two weighty things, the book of Allah and my sunnah. There is a 100 year gap between Malik ibn Anas and the Prophet. He doesn't tell you who told him. He doesn't say, Qala Rasulullah, because he says, Balaghani, it reached me that the Prophet said, I'm leaving behind two weighty things, the book of Allah and my sunnah. But we know that one of the conditions that have to be met for a hadith to be authentic, you have to fill the gaps. You cannot say balaghani because there's a hundred year gap that has to be filled between you, O Malik ibn Anas, and the Holy Prophet. And that gap was not filled. You find brothers and sisters, it's shocking that there are 39 chains for the hadith that says Kitab Allah wa Itrati Ahl Bayti, but that version is ignored. And the hadith that has a gap between the Holy Prophet, it's Mursal and it's mentioned in only one book, and Bukhari and Muslim, they saw that hadith and Muwatta ibn Malik, and they considered it da'if, and they didn't include it in Bukhari, in Muslim, in Tirmidhi, in Nisa'i. They didn't include it. So we have understood now, Hadith al-Thaqalain is authentic because of Tawatur. Hadith al-Thaqalain refers to the Ahlul Bayt, which are mentioned in Surah 33, Ayah 33. We've confirmed that the wives of the Prophet are excluded from the Ahlul Bayt. We've mentioned that Kitab Allah wa Sunnati is mentioned in Muwatta Malik. And it was seen by Bukhari and Muslim and they excluded it because it was not authentic in their eyes. Now, we look at the Hadith itself. What does the Hadith tell us about Ahlul Bayt? It tells us a number of things. Number one, it confirms the isma of the Ahlul Bayt. Because the Prophet says, إِنِّي تَارِكٌ فِيكُمُ الثَّقَلَيْنِ كِتَابَ اللَّهُ وَعِطْرَةِ أَهْلَ بَيْتِ مَا إِنْ تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِمَا لَنْ تَضِلُّوا بَعْدِي أَبَدًا I'm leaving behind two weighty things, the Book of Allah, and my Ahlul Bayt. If you adhere to both of them, you will never go astray. And they will not separate until they meet me at the pool of Kautha. There is a unity here between the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. Everything that is said about the Qur'an, we can apply it to the Ahlul Bayt because they are inseparable, the Prophet says. Allah Azza wa Jal, what does He say about the Qur'an in Surah Fussilat, Ayah 42? لَا يَأْتِيهِ الْبَاطِلُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَلَا مِنْ خَلْفِ Allah tells us that batil, that falsehood does not approach the Qur'an from in front of it or from behind it. Meaning, the Qur'an is ma'asum. And therefore, the Ahlul Bayt are infallible. Just as the Qur'an is infallible, the Ahlul Bayt are infallible. Hadith al-Thaqalain also confirms the matchless knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah An-Nahl, Surah 16, Ayah number 89, He says what? وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الذِّكْرِ We have revealed the remembrance to you. وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ This Qur'an offers an explanation for all things. 
Ahlul Bayt, they have the explanation for all things. You find it's interesting in Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal. There's a hadith where he shares with us the eulogy that Imam al Hassan gave after the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'mineen. Salawatullahi alayhi It is customary that when someone dies, you give a eulogy. In our communities, when someone passes away, there are people that come forward and speak about their virtues, about their merits, about the righteous deeds that they've performed in their lives. Imam Amir al muminin is martyred. What does Imam al Hassan say about his father after his death? What is the eulogy that Imam al Mujtaba gives? This is recorded in Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He stands in front of the Muslims and he says to them, لَقَدْ فَارَقَكُمْ رَجُلٌ بِالْأَمْسِ لَمْ يَسْبِقْهُ الْأَوَّلُونَ بِعِلْمٍ وَلَا يُدْرِكُهُ الْآخِرُونَ Imam al-Mujtaba, he says, Last night, a man died, whom there is no one before him, or after him that will match his knowledge. This is what Imam al Mujtaba says. Kana Rasulullah Imam al Hassan says, whenever there was a battle, Rasulullah would give the banner to Amir al Mu'mineen. That is what you see. Imam al mujtaba says, but there is something in Alam al Ghayb that you don't see when Amir al Mu'mineen is holding the banner. He says, وَجِبْرَائِيلُ عَنْ يَمِينِهِ وَمِكَائِيلُ عَنْ شِمَالِهِ He says, you people see Amir al Mu'mineen standing alone, holding the flag, the banner. But you don't see that Jibra'il is standing to his right and Mika'il is standing to his left. This is what Ahmed ibn Hanbal mentions in the eulogy of Amir al Mu'mineen. لا ينصرف حتى يفتح له. He never drops that banner until he has achieved victory. Meaning, this is a reference to those who were given the banner and they failed. The man who never fails and is always victorious, they make him the fourth Khalifa. While the ones who drop the banner and run, they make them the first and the second and the third. So Hadith al-Thaqalain confirms the, match, the matchless knowledge of the Ahlul Bayt. And it also does something else it also establishes that they are chosen by Allah. Why? Because in the same way, every ayah is chosen by Allah in the Quran. Every word is selected by Him. Every letter is perfectly chosen by Allah Azza wa Jal. All of the members of Ahlul Bayt are also chosen by Him. Just as every ayah, Allah has to endorse it. Every imam has to also be endorsed by Allah Azza wa Jal. And you find that, my dear brothers and sisters, this is why Ahlul Bayt, they are the litmus test of truth. All Muslims claim to follow the Holy Quran. But Ahlul Bayt are the ones that confirm that you understood the message of the Qur'an. Because how do you differentiate Haq from Batil in the battle of Jamal? You have one side claiming to follow the Qur'an and the other side claims to follow the Qur'an. You find in the battle of Safin, one group holds up the Qur'an on the spears. The other side is claiming to follow the Qur'an. 
the Furqan will always be, where is Ahlul Bayt in this equation? You find that even in the world of chemistry, sometimes when you take something away, it becomes poison. Many of you are familiar with carbon dioxide, CO2. Ahlul Bayt and Quran, they give life together. Carbon dioxide is necessary for life to flourish. But what happens when you take away one oxygen molecule? It becomes what? Carbon monoxide. It becomes poison. When you take Ahlul Bayt out of the equation, you are left with poison. That's why, that's why Rasulullah, what does he say? There are many who recite the Qur'an, but the same Qur'an curses them. This is what happens when you divorce Ahlul Bayt from the Holy Qur'an. On these nights, my dear brothers and sisters, our hearts are with the caravan of Al-Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. All of the other Muslims in the Islamic Empire are reciting the Qur'an, but very few are looking for the walking Qur'an in the personality of Zainul Abidin. The traditions say that after traveling from Karbala to Kufa, from Kufa to Sham, from Sham to Karbala, the caravan now is heading back to the city of Medina, where the story of Imam Hussein's movement began. Imam Hussein's movement began in Medina. The traditions say that the caravan of the women and the children draw closer to the holy city of Medina. As they approach the city of Medina, Lady Zainab السلام, in the distance sees the city. She with a heavy heart, with a sorrowful heart, she addresses the city of Rasulullah. Imagine Sayyidah Zainab السلام, after that long journey, after witnessing the massacre of Karbala, after seeing the daughters of Abi Abdullah abused, Sayyidah Zainab with Imam Zainul Abideen, with the daughters of Rasulullah, they are finally coming back to the city of Medina. But Sayyidah Zainab السلام, has a message to the city of Medina. She cries out to Medina, قالت مدينة جدنا لا تقبلينا فبالأحزان والحسرات جينا she says, O oh, city of my grandfather, do not welcome us because we are carrying grief and sorrow. Medina to Jaddina la taqbalina fa bil ahzani wal hasarati jina. خرجنا منك بالأهلين جمعا رجعنا لا رجال ولا بنينا She says, O oh Medina, O oh oh city of Rasulullah, we departed you with the man and our sons. We, we, had, Hassan, we had Hussein with us. We departed you with Abbas. We departed you with Ali al Akbar. Now we are returning to you without the man. The traditions say the first place that Sayyid Zainab goes to is the grave of Rasulullah. She goes to the grave of her grandfather and she stands in front of the grave of Rasulullah. 
she begins to complain to Rasulullah. قالت يا رسول الله يا جدا إني ناعية إليك حبيبك الحسين. She says, Ya Rasulullah, I am here to give you the news of the martyrdom of your beloved Hussein. After that, she leaves the shrine of Rasulullah. She doesn't go to her home. She goes straight to the house of Aba Abdullah. She enters the house of Imam al Hussein, that empty house. She sits in the house of Aba Abdullah and her eyes look towards the mihrab of Aba Abdullah. A mihrab that Imam al Hussein used to stand in, and that mihrab is empty on these days. Sayyida Zainab says to her servant, close the door. I want to sit alone and mourn my brother Hussein. She begins to cry and weep. She remembers the days with Aba Abdullah. Then there is a knock on the door. Sayyida Zainab says, who is at the door? Her servant says, Oh, my mistress, oh, daughter of Amir al Mu'mineen, I will ask her to go away. She says, Who is at the door? She finds that Umm al Banin is at the door, the mother of Abu al Fadl al Abbas. Sayyidah Zainab says, Let her come in. She is part of our tragedy. The traditions say, As soon as Umm al Banin sees Zainab, she says to her, عظم الله لك الأجر بمصابنا بالحسين. سيدة زينب turns to her and says, عظم الله لك الأجر بمصابنا بأبي الفاضل لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب سينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين. We ask Allah عز وجل to accept these tears that we shed for the family of Rasulullah, for the Ahlul Bayt. We ask Allah عز وجل to honor us with the ziyara of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. We pray to Allah عز وجل for the safety of the zuwar of Al Imam Al Hussein. We ask Allah عز وجل to honor us with his ziyara. In this life and a shafa'a in the hereafter. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a request for Surah Al Fatiha, for Sayyidah Fatima Nur Jihan Rizvi, for Sayyid Hamid Ali Safvi, for Muhammad Tufail uh, Chaudi, for Aziz Hussein Khan, for Ghulam Abbas Khan, for Mushir Fatima Rizvi, and for all of the Shia of Amir Al Mu'mineen. So let us all please recite Surah Al Fatiha. For those departed souls, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And for all of those who are need are in need of our prayers, let us recite five times in the loudest of our voices. Amman yujibu al-Muftar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن أمن يجيب أمن يجيب نسألك اللهم بمحمد وعلي وفاطمة والحسن والحسين والتسعة المعصومين من ذرية الحسين فرج عنا يا الله فرجا عاجلا قريبا كلمح البصر أو هو أقرب من ذلك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات 
المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك قاضي الحاجات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات رحم الله من قرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی اکبر کی جنگ دور سے دیکھا کہ یہ حسین جب آخری سلام سنا چل پڑے حسین ہر 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 ایک قدم پہ ٹھوک رے کھاتے رہے حسین بھائی کو یاد کر کے یہ کہنے لگے حسین عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی اکبر لڑے ہزاروں سے بے خوف و بے خطر گرتے ہوئے کہا کہ خدا حافظ اے پدر غم سے کلے جا شق ہوا دھندلا گئی نظر غم سے کلے جا شق ہوا دھندلا گئی نظر دنیا ہوئی سیاہ کہو جان اے ہم کی دھر عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی بچڑے حبیب جینے کی لذر چلی گئی خاسم گئے تو سبد کی طاقت چلی گئی روٹھے جو تم تو خلب کی خوت چلی گئی روٹھے جو تم تو خلب کی قوت چلی گئی اکبر کے ساتھ میری بسارت چلی گئی عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی ڈر ہے نغم سے عابد بیمار چل بسے زینب نہ بے ردا کہیں رن میں نکل پڑے ماں کے تصورات میں سہرے کے پھول تھے ماں کے تصورات میں سہرے کے پھول تھے وہ کم سے کم پی سر کا جنازہ تو دیکھ لے عباس ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی عباس 
ہم کو لاش جوا مل نہیں رہی حسین 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 اور محمد وال محمد صلی اللہ السلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ السلام علیکہ یا نبی اللہ السلام علیکہ یا خیر خلق اللہ و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ السلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ و علی ابنتکا فاطمة الزہراء سیدتی نساء العالمین السلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ و علی اخیک امیر المؤمنین وقائد غر المحجلین و امام المتقین السلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ و علی ولدیک الحسن والحسین سیدین شباب اہل الجن السلام علی التسعة المعصومین من ذریت الحسین علی بن الحسین زین العابدین و محمد بن علین الباقر و جعفر بن محمد الصادق و موسیٰ بن جعفر الكاظم و علی بن موسیٰ الرضا و محمد بن علی الجواد و علی بن محمد الهادی و الحسن بن علی العسکری و الخلف الهادی المهدی عجل الله تعالى فرجه و سهل مخرجه و جعلنا من انصاره و اعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه السلام عليكم سادة